Noah's Ark Children's Ministry is located off Kayunga Road, a few kilometers from Kono Town. Over 200 children live here, and for many, this is the only home and family they know of. Some of the children are picked from dustbins, latrines, and streets when they are between one day to one month old. There are some women who are employed to take care of these children. We put them in the different categories, and you know this is a baby. The baby that's supposed to get milk every minute they need to get milk. The orphanage was founded 21 years ago by Peter Baltandai. Manish Vasani has been partnering with him for 11 years now. So if a baby is found in pit latrines, which we have lots of them, if it is found on, an, on a, in a dustbin or on a garbage heap or whatever, they are our first target. Now, the situation in Uganda is changing. We clearly see that. In the past, we could deal with only those babies. Now, we are getting more and more the requests from police and probation office of helping also bigger children. What we believe that rehabilitation houses are not, is not an institute for kids. Kids are supposed to stay with their families, with their mothers and fathers back at their home. So we have another team that we also look for their families and then we try to resolve the issues and solutions and we try to place them back. We found some of the children painting some of the structures at school as part of their holiday activities. There is also a clinic, a school, a church and a computer laboratory for the youngsters. However, why do they have a fully equipped maternity ward for expectant mothers in a children's orphanage? The major cases that we're getting today are teenage pregnancy, women's abandoned from the house, like the husband is dead in an accident, they don't want to be left in the house, so they don't, have, they don't know where to go, where should they should deliver the baby. So we welcome them here. Some are children with special needs and they are physically handicapped. Like I showed you one girl called Mariam. She was bedridden for more than eight years. She was like a dead body. But today, as you saw, she was clapping with me. She was feeling me. She got excited when she saw me. Because that is all because of the back team that we have who work day and night, who doesn't even see that they have a family back home in Netherlands or in Australia or in America. Although these children who are physically challenged are helped to live, they might have to stay here for the rest of their lives. Supporting a little child has something attractive for many people. But if somebody is 40, 45 years and has a nasty character because it's totally handicapped, how do you inspire people to support that? So I, I, I think as a nation we have a serious challenge there because the number of that sort of people is growing. It costs a lot to provide for these children. Although there are some people willing to give a hand from the diaspora, they prefer sending materials, not money. As in the past, the, the government paid, uh, um, in, in collaboration, they paid the taxes on this. Now we are supposed to pay the taxes. So you're like, okay, we are giving for free help. I don't have necessarily an obligation, otherwise, other than that God is telling me to do so. And then I have to pay tax over that, or donors have to pay tax over that. That sounds quite unfair. Some of the children are already receiving music classes and they are said to have sung for the Indian Prime Minister when he visited Uganda in 2018. They all have dreams and aspirations. I want to be a musician for band because I like playing the instruments and it sounds nice and the more we keep on playing it, the more people like it and the more people join us. And I want to learn music more and more so that I can teach others also. I want to do fashion and modeling stuff. When you hear the stories from these children, most of them are here as a result of the broken family, which is the moral fiber of any stable society. Above all, a good heart is the best religion. Its light is the strongest light ever. And these children, after they have grown up, they might become the best politicians, engineers, doctors, to mention but a few. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV Mukono.